I'm Skip Pritchard and I'm here with Diana Gabaldone here in the Arizona Biltmore for the debut of her new book, The Scottish Prisoner. Yes, absolutely. And we're excited to be here where the book will actually launch on the 29th. On the 29th, yeah. First of all, did I get the spelling, the pronunciation? Oh yes, you did. Okay, very, <laughs> very good. good. Well, we're uh, excited to talk to you. you your, your books are hard to classify. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> yeah, um, romance, historical fiction, time travel, science fiction, adventure, kind of a, adventure, you, yeah, you a mystery. It, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a blend. Was Is that part of the plan? Like? <laughs> well, it wasn't a plan to start with. I just wanted to write a book for practice because I'd always wanted to be a novelist, but I didn't know how. And in fact, I had a PhD in science and was a university professor at the time. And uh, well, what happened was I turned 35 and I said, well, you know, Mozart was dead at 36. If you want to write a book, maybe you better get started here. So I said, fine, what's the easiest possible kind of book I could write for practice? Was to learn whether I really want to do this, and if so, how. And I thought about it for a bit and said, well, for me, maybe the easiest thing to write would be a historical novel, because I was a research professor. I knew my way around a library. And I said, it seems easier to look things up than to make them up. And if I turn out to have no imagination, I can steal things from the historical record. So I said, fine, historical novel. So that's where it began. <laughs> and shortly so thereafter. So this is all for practice. What's yes. going to happen when you're really doing the real thing? I guess that remains to be seen. Because <laughs> how many novels are we in to this Oh, let me practice? see. Well, The Scottish Prisoner, I think, will be the 12th. 12th book. Okay. So it's okay. it's quite the series. And yeah. I'm, as I said, I'm doing my own time travel <laughs> through the books because I started with Echo and the Bone uh, and, uh, and, 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 and working my way backwards. So Well, you can do that. <laughs> and and, and it, it's, it seems to work. So you, you, you have a PhD, and that's a little unusual to go into writing such a books like this. Um, and, and it's a PhD in what exactly? Uh, quantitative behavioral ecology. Which quantitative is, behavioral <laughs> ecology. Yeah, it's just animal behavior with a lot of statistics. You know, don't worry about it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And, and you're known, I think, for your, your studies and, and the way you pull this all together for your accuracy. I think people are always saying Luckily, you know, yes. it's, it's, it's amazing how, how accurate it is. Well, you have one of the most powerful imaginations out there, well, I think. You. I don't know, maybe it's the PhD in, in the <laughs> quantitative. Uh, <laughs> I guess I don't worry about it. <laughs> but the, it, with that imagination, I remember when we first met a few years ago, you were, you were saying that Claire suddenly appeared in this historical novel and, and started, um, in, you, you kind of realized that she, something was amiss, <laughs> so well, tell me about that. Well, I originally um, decided to set it in Scotland in the 18th century on a whim after seeing a Doctor Who episode with a young man in a kilt, and I said, well, that's fetching. I said, okay, Scotland, 18th century, fine. Uh, but after three days or so of research, during which I had begun the book, I uh, said, well, you know, essentially, I'm looking for conflict in the 18th century. You don't do that in Scotland for very long without hitting Bonnie Prince Charlie. So I said, fine, that looks like a lot of conflict. Good, we'll use that. And I said, no, I must have a lot of Scotsmen because of the kilt factor, but I think it would be a good idea if I had a female character to play off these guys that have sexual tension. That's more conflict. That's good. I said, all right, so we've got Scots versus English. Uh, if I make an English woman, we'll have lots of conflict. And so about the third day of writing, I introduced this English woman. No idea who she was, what she was doing there, how she got into the plot, but I loosed her into a cottage full of Scotsmen to see what she'd do. Well, she walked in, they're all crouched around the hearth muttering to each other, and they turned around and stared at her. I'm thinking, why does she look funny? What's going on here? One of them drew himself up, and he said, my name is Dougal Mackenzie, and to me. And without my stopping to think, I just typed, my name's Claire Elizabeth Beecham, and who the hell are you? <laughs> and I said, well, you don't at all like an 18th century person. So I fought with her for several uh, pages, trying to beat her into shape and make her talk like a historical person. But she wasn't having any of this. She just kept making smart-ass modern remarks, and she also took over and started telling the story herself. Is that bird that's calling yes, you about exactly. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, after enough of this, I said, well, it doesn't matter what bizarre thing I do. No one's ever going to read this, so it doesn't matter. Go ahead and be modern. I'll figure out how you got there later. So it's all her fault that there's time travel in these books. <laughs> well, well, the, 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 new, the new book, yeah. with The Scottish Prisoner, which I want to talk uh -huh. about sure. for a minute, um, it's, it's coming around the 20th anniversary, yeah. the year, it's been 20 years been since 20 the album, and this out. is the new 20th yes. collector's edition, yeah. uh, I should say, thing it is too. with, in, in fact, a yeah. CD in the back, Absolutely. which yeah. is a, a musical, which well, I found. It's a, a sampler um, of the Outlander of the musical, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. Let's tell, without 
doing too many spoiler alerts, give us a little uh, flyover. First of all, how long did it, does it take you so to write The Scottish Prisoner, which is... Ah, well, The Scottish Prisoner is uh, a somewhat smaller book than most of the, the big books of the Outlander series. It's about 150,000 words, so that took me about nine months. Nine months. It takes me two or three years months. to write one of the, of, the, okay. <laughs> of the bigger books of the series. That's the smallest at 300,000 words. The larger two are Fiery Cross and Snow and Ashes, which uh, both came in at half a million. Amazing. Or as I said to my agent, they're exactly the same size as Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> the levels of complexity yeah. of your plots and the characters are, is just remarkable. Well, That's a lot of fun, I'll say that. And it, it comes to you organically. Oh, yeah. You really don't have a plan. No, it, I really it sort don't. of goes into it. And, and you don't know when the last book is or what's happening? No, I happening. really don't. Just yeah, I am working on the eighth book uh, in, the, in the, the big series. It is all part of one series, the smaller books, which are focused more on Lord John and the larger ones. But everyone wants to know when is the book that follows Echo and the Bone coming out? Because I ended that on a brilliantly right. executed yes. triple yes. cliffhanger. Yes. <laughs> and I did that on But that one's going to take a few years. <laughs> well, I hope to finish it by the end of next year, by the end of 2012. So okay. fingers crossed there. Because right. I do work on uh, multiple projects at once because it keeps me from ever having writer's block. And so I've been working on, on book eight along with Scottish Prisoner. The Scottish Prisoner, you know, when it gets toward the end of a book, then I have to put everything else aside just to wrap I, up the loose ends. When you go from these Lord John to the, the larger mm -hmm. series, you know, creative diversity, but you oh, yeah. also have a hand uh, early days, I recall, in comics. Yes, that's right. That I, right? Used to, I used to write for Walt Disney Comics. <laughs> All, all, was that before pursuing your PhD or after? Uh, sh shortly thereafter, yeah. I had a postdoc at UCLA when I started doing that. And uh, I uh, actually, I had uh, been reading comic books all my life. I was reading one one day and said, well, this is pretty bad. I bet I could do better myself. I was living in LA at the time, go, uh, working at UCLA. And I found out the name and address of the editor who handled that was also in LA. And I wrote him this very rude letter and said, dear sir, I've been reading your books for the last 25 years. They've been getting worse and worse. <laughs> I said, um, I'm not sure I can do better myself, but I'd like to try. And uh, luckily I hit Del Connell, a gentleman with a sense of humor. He wrote back and said, OK, try. So he sent me a, a sample script so I could see how to lay it out. I wrote him a story. He didn't buy it, but he did something much more valuable. He told me what was wrong with it. So he did buy my second story, and I continued to write for him until essentially uh, uh, the higher-ups at Disney said, we've got 40 years of Carl Barks scripts in the files. Why are we buying new ones? And so they stopped buying new ones, and that was the end of my comics career up until uh, a couple of years ago when I wrote a graphic novel for uh, for um, Bill Ray. Right. So, so it, it seems to me, you know, as we, we look at this, you've had a, a variety of successes, academia, um, so far, so good. creative, whether <laughs> yeah. it's comics, whether it's mm -hmm. these uh, these practice books. Again, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll wait for the real uh, the real yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like twenty more books then, if you would, and then and then think about it. Uh -huh. But um, one of the things that strikes me mm -hmm. is that you just you take action. Oh yeah. And it, it seems that many people, if they have this innate talent, you, you have the talent mm -hmm. and creativity and innovation, but they don't do anything with it. And that yeah. seems to be a theme that, that I'm hearing from you. Yeah. Uh -huh. In order to do something, just get on with it. Well, yeah, you know, the famous soliloquy from Hamlet, to be or not to be, whether it is no learn in the soul to suffer the slings and arrows, or by take arms and by opposing in them, I always say, how could there possibly be any doubt? You know, take arms and then you know, get it over with. Why would you sit around suffering? That's the point here. And, and so many people do. They do, yeah. Well, so it's, it's a call to action. Why it's, it's a classic play, yeah. But yeah. What, what, what other uh, success tips would you have for someone else who's out there aspiring or has a, a story within them or something else that they have to do? Uh -huh. Well, that's a yeah, commonly asked question is what advice would you have for an aspiring writer? And really, it's the same advice I would have for any writer. Uh, yeah, well, those three rules of success. Number one is read. Read a lot. Read everything. Because this is how you decide not only what you like, but what you don't like. And it's also where you begin to see how things are done. I, I should say, if you like everything, you can write a book like you do, which exactly. is just have yeah, everything in there. Case, you bet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I was telling someone just recently, you know, writers have no secrets. Anything a writer does is right there on the page. <laughs> you can see how they did it. You just have to learn how to look. And by reading a lot, you learn how to look. You see the patterns. You say, well, I liked 
both these books, but I like this one a lot more. Why is that? Well, it's the characters. They seem more real. These are kind of wooden. Well, why is that? Well, it, I think it's the way they talk. You know, the, the dialogue seems much more natural. This is kind of stilted. Well, why is that? You know, what did he do in the dialogue? And you could begin to distinguish that. So you read to begin with. And number two is write, which is very important because you can take classes and go to conferences and all kinds of things, but nothing will teach you to write except the act of putting words on paper, which is truly terrifying. But that's the truth. I mean, if there is a secret to writing, that's it. Is that you, that's all there is. It's you and the page. <laughs> and uh, so that's read, write, and number three is the most important. Don't stop. Don't stop. Most people do stop. I mean, they get down the a page, a chapter, you know, half a pound of manuscript, and they say, oh my God, you know, I'll never be Shakespeare, and they throw it away. Uh, yeah, I've had some people say, you know, I just tell people to, to, to write a whole yeah. book, and yeah. or write a half a book, and mm -hmm. usually they'll stop after a second chapter, and we'll oh, never yeah. hear from them again, yeah. because mm -hmm. they, they, they don't want to mm -hmm. do it. And it strikes me that those uh, tips, even for non-writers, are, are similar in that. Oh, yes, for you know, anything, yeah. Persistence. Persistence is, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Keep doing it. <laughs> and, and keep uh -huh. at it, because yeah. so many people don't. And, yeah. and uh, you've kept at it in so many different fields. That's yeah. true. I, I like a lot of things. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to the success of Scottish Prisoner. Oh, I think and, so. And uh, mm -hmm. being released. And the big party will be here yeah. up there yeah, as well. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but also all the, all the other books, and there are other people all over the world waiting for uh, the sequel to Echo on the Boat, so that'll it's be exciting as well. It has a title well. at last. I went hunted for real. It's a title. Yeah, it was more than a year showing up, sometimes they are. But it is called Written in My Own Heart's Blood. Written in My Own Heart's Blood. Yeah, uh, I call it Moby Dick for short. <laughs> 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 my Own Heart's Blood, M-O-H-B, Moby. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> There you go, that creativity. <laughs> well, thank you so much for, uh, for talking about your That's book. Yeah. All, all of your books, which, you uh, so as much. you know, are um, diverse, creative, innovative, and like you said, there's something in there for everyone. If there, you can't find is. something, <laughs> in, and if, if you don't like some genre, it switches to another one. That's before right, you have me on turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, so I so much appreciate your efforts and you know, helping to, to get these to people. That's great. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure entirely. Thank you.